APC speak out today, several days after Abga Soludo was declared winner of the number governorship election. And the DG of National Institute of Legislative and Democratic Studies warns political elites against the return of military coup in Nigeria. Hello everyone, welcome to Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimbale, Channels Television in Abuja. We're keeping tabs on the report submitted to the Lagos State Government by the NSAS panel of inquiry after uh, over the allegations of police brutality and the incident which occurred on the 20th of October 2020 at the Lekito Gate in Lagos. The Justice Doris Okwobi led panel has submitted its report and there are indications that the details are far reaching but the Lagos State Government says a white paper on the report will be released in two weeks and the countdown has begun right here on China's television. It's now 13 days to go. Our eyes are on the matter. The number of governorship election may have come and gone, but the dust is yet to settle. It appears um, uh, all is maybe well on the side of APGA, but there is a political party that is very much aggrieved. If you look at it, as soon as Professor Charles Soludo was declared winner, several of the candidates who ran against him have congratulated him on his victory, except for the candidate of the APC, Senator Andy Uba. Remember that the agent of the APC did not sign the result as declared by the chief returning officer on the night. Tonight, we have a member of the APC campaign and a chieftain of the party, a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, House of Assembly in um, Anambra State, and a lawyer, Honorable Ben Chooks Umwasu. He joins us here in our uh, Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Honorable, for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Why has the candidate of the APC not reached out? I mean, his colleagues, his uh, fellow opponents, uh, had reached out to Professor Soludo. Is there anything that is wrong? Yes. Um, according to my client and uh, Senator Andrew Ba, the candidate of APC, a lot was wrong. Not specifically against the person of uh, Professor Soludo or APGA as a political party, but the institution that conducted the election. I want to get that clear to everybody. Our grouse and the work we are doing night after night since after the election is not against an individual. It's against the institution that conducted the election. And they conducted it very, very badly. And when they did that, it, the result that came out is being protested against by uh, Senator Anduba and APC. And I will explain. All right. Um, we'll get to it. And we have some time to do that tonight. I mean... You are one of the lawyers yes. that is going to prosecute the case. Yes. And I assume that you, you want to go to court. Yes. You want to institute, uh, go to tribunal to challenge the outcome of yes. the election. Yes, because we have a plethora of evidence we believe can sustain a, a successful petition. Your party did not win any local government. Afghan won 19 out of 21. YPP won one and PDP won one. On what grounds do you want to challenge the result? Is it that you have a chance in this result or on the election? Look, our grouse is not about winning one or several uh, local governments. We are saying that we have discovered that there are irregularities in the conduct of the election, that INEC was grossly understaffed, that in so many polling units, we have 5,720 elections did not hold at all. In most of the places... How many of them? Have you been able to put... No, we have not determined that. We are still working on the, on the figures. That, in, 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 uh, that out of that 5,720 polling units, that in most of them, INEC did not come to conduct elections at all. And you have records they, of that? We have records. 
Where they came, they came about three o'clock or thereabouts. You can verify that. You are uh, an investigative, uh, investigative journalist. You can ask the DSS when INEC staff came to where elections were conducted. I'll give you an instance, poignantly. One, in Nubi, in the Middle South, in Nubi, what's one, two, three? In most of the places, they didn't come. The places where they came, like I said to you, they were there at about three o'clock. And about, after about an hour or so, they left. In, in, in Nobi Ward 1, specifically in one of the pulling units near the secondary school, near the primary school, INEC came there, a man with marks on his face, a black man. He said, they didn't have staff that will operate the BVAT. And he was asking if we have young people who have uh, knowledge of ICT. They got them too. It was that bad. In uh, Obosi Ward, two words in Obosi, in Uke, in, a, uh, in uh, the catchment, proper catchment area of the running mate of Anduba. It didn't happen. They didn't, there was no vote. They didn't even come at all. INEC did not come at all. And I can assure you that what we are finding from the reports we are getting from the PUs and from the local governments, it could be, it could be, it could be an avalanche of irregularities and uh, perhaps one of the worst conducted elections in the history of our number state. I don't want to jump, um, but I know as so a lawyer you understand the spirit of election petition yes. and election litigation. It is sui generis. Substantial. It is sui generis. A particular, it is a particular kind of civil proceedings. It has, it is thematic. You have to come in within the confines of is dictates. But don't dictates, you have to prove it? Dictates of the Electoral Act within a given time. And that's why we are, like I said, I said to you, we're running against time. We're working day in, day out. That's what I told you. Collating the things we believe can sustain the What's position. the ultimate agenda of your client? We are saying that the election was conducted in such a bad way that it could not have produced a winner. And therefore, we're asking the court, we will ask the court to nullify the election. Oh, is it it's also, not against an individual. Is he thinking that he could be a beneficiary should he, I mean, uh, come out victorious in the court? The, 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 the democracy we find ourselves in is growing. Every time there's an election, there are faults. Those faults are litigated upon and corrected, sometimes uh, by law. Remember, that when President Yeradua was declared the winner of the, of the presidential election, he, he, he was declared winner, but he said that the process that produced him was faulty. We must be up and doing in cleaning up this. Uh, because I, the, the reason why I ask that question yeah. is in any civil proceeding, in any um, uh, civil proceedings, you, you are going to court actually to seek a redress, to seek. Uh, the relief. The, the relief to seek the protection of the court on a particular and there is an agenda yes. there is what you are going to court to to seek for yes. and that's exactly what I'm asking are you just going to for the sake of uh, wanting to uh, to clean up the electoral space no certainly not we ha we believe Senator Anduba believes that if the election is properly conducted given the massive followership he was able to generate within a period of three months, that if the election is properly conducted and the specter of fear, the specter of violence that was in the air, that was almost palpable mm. to everybody, that actually caused most of the elite and political influencers not to come back home at all, is set aside that he will do a lot better. All right. I wanted you to lay the, the election. I wanted you to lay the premise on which you wanted to go to court. Yes. And uh, some, uh, some of your grievances about the, uh, the polls. Um, it does look like your party had thought about this, and that's the reason why on the first night of the, after the first ballot, your, uh, your party agent, whom I interviewed on the floor of that, uh, said, look, uh, the big uh, something had not cried. And, you know, he said something in parable. On the other night also, he went on on the same uh, trajectory. Uh, like, you guys are not really happy with it, and you've laid it. But I like the All Progressive Ground Alliance to react to this, because they are the beneficiary of that election. They won the election. I'm being joined virtually 
by the national chairman of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Chief Victor Oye. Thank you so much, Chief, for joining us tonight. Um, I, I wanted you to listen to what uh, Honorable Umosu had to say. Is a lawyer, is a chieftain of the APC, and speaking on behalf of the candidate of the APC, they said they will go to court. They said that that election was substantially, did not meet the demands or uh, the dictates of the electoral process. What's your reaction? And for us in Africa, we don't have any cause for alarm. We want the election fair and square. And uh, the whole world has applauded the election. Everybody is very happy that the election went the way it mm -hmm. went. Even the United States of America have congratulated the governor elect. The election was without violence. And as far as we are concerned, it ranks as one of, one of the most peaceful elections in this country and in Anambra State. Everybody saw what happened. Uh, what led to the, the fall of his candidate was that he started boasting before the election that he had won the election already without factoring mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. the feelings of the impulse of the masses the real voters, do you understand? And uh, even if you conduct the election one million times, Africa will win because our candidate mm -hmm. is on ground, the party is on ground in Anambra State. The party has achieved, has delivered on the promises it made to the people of Anambra State within a short period of time. And it is not in dispute that the election was conducted transparently credibly and fairly. In fact, every other candidate had congratulated Professor Chukumata Soludo. I'm surprised why the APC candidate had not done so. Somebody who came third and did not win a single local government area out of 21. You are challenging a man that got 19 over 21. It doesn't make sense to me. So I think what they should do is to throw in the towel as sportsmen, you know, in a spirit, spirit of sportsmanship. Throw in the towel and join the winner. There's always another time. You cannot go beyond what God has designed in your life. God has designed that Professor Chukumata Soludo will become the governor of Anambra, and so shall it be. So it is. No force on earth can change it, because what God has written, he has written. What scripts so scripts it? What is written is written. Mm -hmm. Nobody can change. Even if they go to court, they will not win the suit because it is clear that I conducted a transparent election. Everybody in Anambra State applauded that result. The whole world stood still waiting for the result of that election. When we went to Iyala, when the people, when the INA went to Iyala to conduct the election in Iyala, people there was palpable fear in the air. But the election went smoothly. The equipment worked perfectly. So why are they going to tribunal just to waste money and waste time mm -hmm. and cause unnecessary furore? That is not the spirit of sportsmanship. Our, sp our politics should not be, uh, there should not be bitterness in politics. People should accept you know, the, their defeat and go and plan again and try again. That's all about politics. So I'm surprised that, um, they have decided to go to court. If they go to court, all well and some good. Of those to you. We'll match them, we'll um, meet them in court. He said in several areas, INEC uh, officials did not show up. Did you experience, uh, experience anything of such? So that's where we are now. We are, we are very confident we win, the we win in court. If they go to court, fine, we'll meet them there. Yeah, he, he mentioned a few places. I don't know if any of such happens, uh, especially with the use of uh, uh, the technology, the beavers. Did you experience, did you hear anything that uh, such that, uh, um, the, because the reason why elections were conducted in Iyala, for example, uh, is because, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, I mean, some of the officials said that um, they were not allowed into that local government area. And we heard, uh, we saw the drama that played out um, uh, 
at one of the local government where the returning officer we had to wait long hours for them to be putting all of those together. Uh, does anything that um, Honorable Mwosu has said today uh, correlate with what you saw on the ground? Mm -hmm. Not at all, not at all. I didn't know where he got all the names and figures he was mentioning. You understand? It was it, it, it was it it sounded very very strange, very absurd. Uh, there were a few hitches there and here and there in terms of the malfunction of the device. There's no question about that. But when the faults were corrected, the voting started, and there was voting all over the state, even though there was a bit uh, uh, a few glitches here and there. But the people were enthusiastic. They were ready to come out and vote, and they came out and voted. That was the, what surprised many people, especially those in the opposition. They did not expect the large turnout of voters. They remember that before, uh, as a build up to the election, there were crises, there were you know violence all over the place. But uh, we thank President Muhammad Buhari for sending in adequate security men to take care of the situation. And the people's fears were allayed, and they came out in large numbers to vote. So what my friend there, my brother Ben Chooks, was, say, was saying didn't make any, didn't, didn't uh, tally with what happened on the day of the election. We were just quoting figures, mentioning figures uh, who were all over the state. That wasn't true. The election went on smoothly, uh, all right. and there let, was let, no single hear. incident of violence. Everybody witnessed what happened. The whole world was hooked to a number of states, and they witnessed what transpired. Everybody was happy, and those of us in Apoga we worked very, very hard. While our opponents were banking on other strategies to win, we banked on meeting the people. We conversed from one local government to another local government area. The candidate of APC did not even hold his, uh, his uh, flag off. He didn't hold it. He could not conduct a flag off. But APCA conducted its flag off on the 25th of September, and it was a carnival in Anambra State. That was the day the election was won. And if you go across the state, or the three territorial zones in Anambra State, Abuga is everywhere in Anambra, rooted. Even if you conduct the election 20 times, Abuga will win. So my advice to my brother, mm -hmm. the candidate of the APC, All right. our brother, so, let him uh, try to Chivo, uh, Chivo, yeah. Let me allow uh, Mr. Uh, and, uh, to, move to forward respond with to some lines. of the things that he said. Uh, as we're talking, day. he seems to have some reactions to some of the things that you have raised. Let me allow you to, to, to come back into the conversation. Thank you very much. Chief Oye is my friend and uh, a veteran of courts. Um, he knows what I'm talking about, and I challenge him to produce results of, that took place in Oba and Duke. These are words. Oba has two words. Uke has one word. So these are three. And these are these are. Catchment area of the running mate of Anduba. Which you think um, you could Chief have Emeka. Won yes. You think you would have with won heavy election? votes, my brother. With heavy votes, Eden Mili South has in excess of 144,000 votes. So if anything happens to them, the election is um, is hot. And the Abatete result, Abatete is also Eden Mili. And the running mate to the, to the governor, to, uh, to Senator Anduba, comes from Idemili. Idemili has a federal constituency, Idemili North, Idemili South. The result of Abatete is nowhere to, it's it, hanging there. No election took place in Oba and Duque. These two places I can vouch for. And I am telling you, is, he said, are those the basis where you, why you're going to call those in no, those no, two no. places? Uh, no, 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 not just, I gave you instances. We don't have too much time for me to reel out all the places. And uh, Chief Oye was saying that I was mentioning figures and no. Our case in court is not against an individual. It is the process that we are going to attack in court. And that is a provision of the Electoral Act that the election was 
not conducted in substantial compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. That is the job of a lawyer. That is all we are doing. It's not a, we are saying the processes that produced you on election day, they are not in compliance with the Electoral Act. Therefore, your emergence is spurious. Simple thing. That's what we are saying. And we are saying conduct this election in compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. It's not against Professor Charles Soludo. It's not against my friend uh, Chifoye. It's not against Abga. No. And whether the whole world has congratulated somebody, it does not detract from the fact that the person who feels aggrieved, the Constitution says, has a right to seek redress. And the judges will hear the evidence. They, Abga, will be served. They will prove their reply to the petition. Both will be weighed. And yes. in seeking the redress, you are hoping that you that came third might be declared winner. It doesn't, if the last man, the last man who has locus, who, who, who contested the election, can nullify it. It doesn't matter whether so you're... So you're looking for the nullification we, of the election? We are saying the election that was conducted was not conducted properly. In Ogawad 1, for instance, let me give you an instance, where Senator Andy Bart comes from. Go and look for the result, please. You will see that the number of accredited voters and the number of figures allotted to the different political parties far outnumbers the number of accredited voters. Those numbers that we are added are what we call toxic votes. They shouldn't count. And we are saying that it runs through many of the local governments. Indeed, the reports of the AEOs, the reports of the EOs, we are looking for the results from the local governments. We are, going, we are delving into them, one local government after another. We want to do the 21. Have you filed a case in court at Very the tribunal? Sure. We have time. You have the window? We have time. All right. Let me allow uh, Chivoye again to, uh, to come back into the, to reply you on what you said. Chivoye, uh, you heard, he mentioned Oba. Uh, he mentioned Uge. Uh, Uke. Uh, these are areas that he mentioned. And he said that the hope is that there might be a nullification. Is that not uh, that the election was not substantially conducted in compliance with the Electoral Act? And he said he heard everywhere. The whole of Anambra. Yeah, my brother, if you listen to, <laughs> to my brother, Ben Chips, he would say that he didn't have any, any grounds to you know, make the allegations he made. He was just talking about who cares, who cares, who cares. What is who cares? Elections were, or election was conducted in 5,720 you know, polling units in Anambra State. And you know what that means? 5,720 polling units in Anambra State. And uh, you, you talked about Oga. Why did the APC candidate who comes from Oga, why didn't he win his local government? You are talking about the, the, the deputy, deputy governorship candidate who comes from Idemili. Idemili is Abga stronghold. APC does not even exist in, in, in Idemili. Idemili is between Abga and BDP. That is just the truth. And you know, the guy that is representing the, the, the constituency, Idemili North and South, in the National mm -hmm. Assembly House of Reps, is a PDP guy. And Abga won the thing before they went to the tribunal and to the court to nullify Abga's victory there in the last election, 2019. So it's the stronghold of Abga. APC does not exist anywhere in Idemili. Even in Oga, where the candidate of the APC guy, where he comes from, he does, the, the APC does not exist in Oga. In, in, I mean, in, 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 in uh, uh, Aguata. And that was why he lost in Aguata local government. If the candidate of APC could not win in his local government, what about the deputy? The deputy couldn't have won. The campaign manager of APC lost in Anyamelon. He lost. He lost in his ward. He lost in his local government area. These people do not exist here. And why is he going to court? He just wasted the time of the judiciary. There are more important things for the judiciary to do. There are many cases hanging there yet to be attended to, and you're going to cause over free, uh, court over frivolities. They shouldn't waste the time of the court. 
if I were the court, once you raise this, I would throw it out. Because it's supposed to talk about the candidate of the party or the party itself and not IMEG. Now they're attacking IMEG, they're attacking the institution that conducted the election. This is the first time I've heard that. Instead of attacking Apuga and attacking our candidate, they're attacking IMEG, which is wrong. IMEG conducted the election in substantial compliance with the Electoral Act, totally. And the election was applauded by the whole world. This is the first election that has that attracted international attention in this country. No election attracted as much attention as this election attracted. But to the glory of God, the election went smoothly. People were happy. People came out to vote. The results were collected. I next spent time ensure that the results counted before they announced the results. What happened that the, the whole world saw it? Before the election was the, the election was concluded in the Hiala. It was they said that the Hiala was AP stronghold. It got there, we got more votes. 8,300 and 8,253 votes. And we beat the APC candidate to the third position. It, look at the results of the election. Apuga candidate got 112,000 plus votes. PDP 53,000 plus votes. APC 43,000 plus votes. What are you contesting? Even if we double the vote of the APC, it will not get up to 90,000. What are we talking about here? What I advise him to do, uh, my brother, the APC candidate, is to try another time. Let me tell you something that happens in life. If God has not designed something for you, it will never happen. That is just the simple truth. You go to court, you waste your money, you waste your time. Because you are now talking about uh, the, your candidate against the will of the people. The people expressed their will. There was no violence in, during the election. Africa did not conduct the election. The election was conducted by an umpire. And the umpire, with the, before public view, before public uh, uh, eyes, everybody saw what happened and the result we are collected from the world, from the polling units to the world, from the right. collection center to the Chivoye, local government. From I, I, local I like us to, to state, I mean, wrap up the conversation, and I would like you, I like to get your final word uh, on on the matter. Yes, you I are have. going to court. That's the stance of your candidate. Final. That's the stance of your and party. I have had, I have had, Chief Oye, the facts will speak for themselves. Like I have told you. The um, election petitions are sui generis, and they are a particular style of civil, civil For our the, viewers the, the saying, litigation. Sui generis is a Me, Latin word. Yeah, I said it's, 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 a, it's a special type of civil proceeding. It is time bound, and it, it has ambits within which you must uh, prove your case. And if you prove your case, the tribunal will grant your prayers. If you don't, it will not. And I am saying that uh, the clamor for my client, uh, Dr. Senator Andy Uba, not to go to court is, uh, is suspicious. What, what, why are you running away from court? Why, are they, why, are they, why, why is everybody you saying? You have a watertight case? I believe that we, the, the plethora of evidence that we will present in court will persuade the court that this election was conducted by INEC, not in compliance with the Electoral Act and its uh, guidelines. All right. That is our case. And that's where you, you stand. And we believe that if we succeed, All right. then the pronouncement will be, will, will be nullified. OK. That's your final word. And let me get that of Chief, uh, Chief Oye in 30 seconds. Your final word on this matter. Uh, my final word is to thank the people of Anambra State for coming out on mass to vote for our party, Africa. And I urge uh, them to be in prayer, to be in prayer to, for God to touch the heart of everybody. Let us work as brothers mm -hmm. and sisters to move Anambra State forward. What are we fighting for? We're fighting for the growth and development of Anambra State. And since Professor Ludo has got the ticket, God has given him the mandate, let us give him a chance to turn Anambra State into the air of our dream. 
everybody is confident that Professor Ludo will deliver. And I pray God to give him the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to perform superlatively as governor to the glory of God and to the happiness of the people. Chief Victor Oye, thank you so much. The national chairman of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA. Thank you indeed, Chief Victor Oye. And I must thank you, Honorable Ben Chuk Umwosu, uh, one of the lawyers, I guess, to uh, Senator Andrew Uba and the chieftain of the APC, former speaker of the Anambra State House of Assembly. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you for having me. We take a break, everyone. And when we return, Professor Suleiman Abubakar will join us. He is the Director General of the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies. And we shall be discussing the threats to Nigeria's democracy. He's warning that politicians need to be careful or else Nigeria might be thrown back to the very dark days of military rule. What does he mean by that? We get details when we return from this break. Everyone, join us again. The House of Representatives Committee on Judiciary is canvassing for security for judicial officers to avoid a repeat of the siege on the residence of the Supreme Court Justice Mary Odile. Chairman of the committee, Onofiok Luke, stated this during the budget defense session of the National Judicial Council. The committee is concerned that actions like that could weaken the morale of judicial officials. The Senate has resolved to investigate Tuesday's gas explosion in Ladipo, Mushin area of Lagos State, which killed five people and injured ten others. The upper chamber is therefore mandating its committees on petroleum downstream and gas to, as a matter of urgency, investigate the remote and immediate causes of the explosion and report to the Senate to prevent future occurrences. Delta State Governor Ifani Okowa has continued to make consistent efforts to reduce unemployment, which he believes will check the rising insecurity in Nigeria. Receiving participants of Course 44 of Armed Forces Command and Staff College Jaji at the Government House Asaba, it presents another opportunity to highlight some of his achievements, especially in the area of infrastructure development and peace building. A group of political activists in the Zamfara All Progressives Congress, led by Dr. Sani Abdullahi Shinkafi, has stated that the ward congresses conducted by the party at the weekend in Zamfara State remains valid and that no courts can set it aside as it conformed to all constitutional provisions. Dr. Shinkafi also argued that former governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yari, and Senator Kabiru Marafa are trying to enact what they did in 2019 and sabotage the efforts of the APC to win the 2023 general elections. Shinkafi called on the national leadership of the party to apply sanctions while expelling them from the party. Back everyone. If Nigeria doesn't want a return to military regimes, as seen in recent uh, coups across Africa, the nation's political elite must begin to respect the country's democratic culture and uphold democratic principles during elections. This was the warning given by the Director General of the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, Professor Abubakar Suleiman, at the Policy Dialogue on Electoral security and inclusive citizen participation in Nigeria, which held in Abuja. He said that the institute is worried about the trend of manipulating in, uh, elections using insecurity, warning that lack of faith in Nigeria's electoral process by the electorate could lead to anarchy. Conversations at the meeting revolved around the high level of voter apathy in elections across Nigeria, but especially at the number of elections and heavy military presence, which the Director General says cannot be replicated during a nationwide general election. Take a listen to him at that event. What I want stability in our electoral process, what I want democracy to stay, to remain with us, what I want, don't want the military to come back again, it depends on all of us as a people. Nobody should be under the, 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 the illusion 
that the era of ministry is over. What, happening, what is happening in Africa is a worrisome development. In Sudan, in Mali, in, 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 in charge, is a worrisome development. It could, it could snowball onto us in this country. So, if you don't want it, and we don't want it, and we don't pray for it, it's a matter of, our, it's, it's a reflection. It's, it's going to be a reflection, a function rather, of our attitude to democratic issues and elect, electoral issues. So the point I'm making is this. We, as Nigerian politicians, the political class in this country, they must be worried about the situation. They must inculcate the, 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 the finance and you know, a modern political culture. The political culture that, that emphasizes inclusiveness, that emphasizes participatory democracy, that tend to respect the wishes of Nigerian people in positions at the at level of party politics of candidates will not help anybody. Judiciary given out, determining who become the governors and president will not help anybody. Nigeria must be allowed to choose their leader. Right, that is Professor Abubakar Salaiman. He then joins us now in the studio to discuss further on this subject. It's very important, the sustenance of our democratic process. Thank you so much, Prof, for joining us tonight. Thank you. Good evening. You are afraid that what is happening in some part of um, Africa might come on this shop. A lot of people have said it can never. It won't happen. It can't happen in Nigeria. But you said on the sideline of that event that we should be worried. We should be worried. No country is immune to it. Our attitude, our conduct, our disposition to the ideal of democracy is something that calls for serious concern. We had it in Zimbabwe in 2017. We have it in Guinea, in Mali, in Sudan. We don't pray for it in Nigeria. Those are smaller countries. That's why we don't pray for it in Nigeria. Can it ever happen in Nigeria? I return. I'm, it's I'm, 21 years or so I don't, since Nigeria returned to I democratic rule. I do not rule. pray for it. Nobody pray for it. Who well, are they? Are they but, signals? But towards, the, but towards that. But the the the, the signal, the signpost, the one signal is there for us to be careful of. We have a president that is so humane, that is so sincere, that want to believe that the electoral rule should be respected. But we have at the subnational level some political actors and elites who believe that it must be do or die in their ascendancy to power. If that attitude or that political culture continue, we should be very careful, we should be worried. And that is why as an institute, we are sending the warning signal to Nigerian political elite, especially as we are drawing closer to 2023. There are a number of elections, yes, the, the, the result, it was peaceful, the conduct was peaceful. The presidency did a good job by ensuring that no blood was shed. The result has been given, vote casts, vote announced, so you image, but that is not the question. It's not just about the emergence of the governor. That's not the question. The question is how many, what's the population of, of Anambra people? It's about 5 million. Or it's more than 5 million. Yeah, over 5 million. By, by, by the census of 2006, it was 4.1 social million. Absolutely. It should yeah. be more than 5 million. Yeah, it's, I mean. And people that determine who now became the governor of Anambra state, they are less than one fifteen thousand. That is not democracy. That was not, you know, reflect the true representative of um, a number of people. Why are the apathy? The question is, why are Nigerians developing that political apathy? Why are they disenchanted in the electoral process? What is carrying, what is deterring them? What are the issues? I think these are the things that, as analysts, as you know intellectuals as think tank of you know democratic institution we are worried of 
So if we are practicing democracy, which has to do the, with the government or the government of the majority, whereby the majority decide who rules, majority decide who become the governor, who become the senator, we are saying what obtains in Anambra was not a reflection of the majority. We have 2.5 million registered voters. We have 250 sub fire and something voters, out of which the person that won the election had 112 you know, votes. Does that suggest through representative of a number of people? So, so our question, our, our worry is look, we, are, we have just 10%, just 10% or less than 11% of the registered voter voting for the, 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 the new man at the end of affair in Anambra, show that is not democracy. But that's not, the, that's not the fault of the man who... who I'm not... I'm not we say, we the say, we question, say, see, Prof. I've, I've just said one thing now. The question, Prof. Give the kudos to presidency. Give the kudos to the military, the, the police. Give the kudos to INEC. But the question is, why are, why are the Anambra not coming out to vote? Why did they refuse to... You should, you should, you should consign us. There is a trend. In, in the last four years ago, it was 24.4% uh -huh. of voter turnout. Yeah. It went deeper than it was 10% the last time. Uh -huh. I mean, these, uh, the, 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 this election. And the question, you look at what preceded the day of the election, the weeks before the election, yeah. months before the election. Yeah. In fact, some people, analysts have said, they were even surprised that 10% of people came out for this election. Mm -hmm. because of the security threat mm -hmm. in that region. Mm -hmm. So the question now arises, if by 2023, or by next year, we don't pray for it, we have relative peace now, we have threat to security in Northwest, threat to security in Northeast, in Southwest, everywhere, what happens? How do we conduct election? How do we ensure that people that come out as our candidates, as our governors, as the president, are true reflections of the wishes of Nigerian people. Is it not the psychology of security? Yeah, the, the psychology of the voter, Prof. Yeah. For them not to come out, why are they not coming out? That's, that's a, a big question. That's the question I'm asking too. They are not coming out one because the environment is safe. It's anarchical in nature. Some of these insecurity, yeah, some are, so to speak, a reflections of some problem crisis within the polity. But again, you see the politician at work. Preceding election, at times they know how to instigate crisis, how to fuel crisis, how to make things difficult, how to scare electorates, how to send the signal to them that this election, if you don't have the way with that, don't come out. And when that happens, the incumbent governor take advantage. Because it's only the incumbent governor that has Senate, he has Senator, he has House of Rep, he has House of Assembly, he has Commissioner, their family want to come out to hoil, you know, where they're getting their daily bread from. So people that do not have any stake as such, that do not have people in government, it's no, let me just say, they will develop that passive attitude to it. Where there is a state of anarchy, violence, either man created or God created, incumbent governor or whoever take advantage of that situation. And now I'm saying we are worried in the institute. National Assembly too is worried that we have to stem the tide of insecurity. We have to identify the various non-state actors that are behind it. Even though it's a bad signal for 2023 election. This is where we are going. What obtains in Anambra is not a good omen. It was peaceful, but it sent away the people that needed to vote, the electorates. 10% of the entire vote cast is not a good development. This is not the, 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 the republic or the kind of democracy we all yearn for, we pray for. And by the time the political actors see this as a leeway to scare opponents, to scare electorate, to take advantage of situation, that become a new culture, you know, going forward. That we should be wary of. About uh, 2.4 million voters are the... Uh, that's what, that's what is obtainable in Anambra State. Um, 
just about 10% uh, of that figure uh, came out for accreditation. Another 5% uh, or so um, were rejected votes. So that also cut down um, that. Um, so we had just uh, about 90% uh, or so or 95% of the entire accredited voter that had their vote count. Is that substantial enough to worry you too? A 5% that their vote didn't count, didn't count based on maybe uh, void votes or, or violence or whatever. You see, you see, when you operate under, you know, a test environment, you are not sure of the police behind, you see a policeman in front, you see a soldier man in front, you are not at a lot. How you, how you behave sanely? You, you, are not, you are not at your best. There must be a conducive environment. When we talk of election, election itself is a process. It's a process that starts from the pre-election period, the election proper, and the post-election period. It's like going to war. When a war does not start and ended the day you get to the battlefront, it started with your level of preparedness. How do you take care of your, of your family? How do you make sure your family are well fed? What are those you know, psychological variables I'm eating into your decision making process? It, it matters. The so the same thing applies when it comes to election process. The development of our electoral process, look at it election in 1998, 99, elections in 2000. Uh, 2001, uh, 2011, 2015, 2019, are those enough development? Have we come to a point where uh, we've gotten to a starting stage to give the vote up? Uh, like one of the guests earlier said, he got a point in time that a sitting president said the election that brought me to office is flawed or was flawed, you know? Can we say that our electoral process has improved credibly because analysts have also said that the credibility of the process is also an encouragement for the voter to come up? You see, let me, let me say this without any fear of contradiction. There's a good development coming up in this country. And when that development is coming from the National Assembly, you see the governor resisting it. And what's that? People talk about direct primary, for instance. This is a process whereby the right set of people emerge from the political party within. That is transparent enough. That is inclusive enough. That is the true reflection of democracy in the real sense of it. Because most of the litigation we're having after election has to do with internal you know, uh, uh, process of you know, uh, bringing up a candidate. But the state governor saying no to it. So while we are trying, while some people are trying to develop or, or construct a building, some are trying to pull it down. And all these things are elitist in nature. It's not Nigerian people, the masses, the electorate. It's not those students, it's not those youth, it's not those women, it's not those babas and, you know, al, al, al majoris that goes there to vote. It's the elites who want to hold on to power at all costs especially at the state level, we do respect to governance. So what to talk about, you know, improvement on our electoral process. Improvement in terms of legislative framework, in terms of policy framework. But when it comes to practicability or ensuring sustenance of what you call this policy to sustain the system, you see some other characters all over trying to resist. We, 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 we see a president before now, that said, yes, I will give you the best. Mr. President, now, Muhammad Buhari is doing the same thing, that I will give you the best electoral, you know, I put the best electoral system in place. But you see some governors at the state level saying, no, we don't want it. And we are living in a situation where in this country today, the governor tends to have the whole sway when it comes to a certain authority. So the point I'm making, Shemu, and you have to get it, that Nigerian elite will not be very careful. We do respect to Mr. President. Mr. President has done his own. He has done his own. He has ruled this country once, twice. It's almost the third time, so to speak. He's trying to put in place 
a legacy that will endure forever. But the state governors, and some other subnational political actors, we must be wary of what we are doing. Our conduct, our attitude, our disposition, our culture, this our culture that are inimical, you know, to democratic development in this country. But, that uh, is our fear at the institute. Yeah, because uh, some people don't believe that the president has done all it needs to do. For example, at the National Consultative Front, they are calling on the United States Secretary of State. I mean, he's due to visit Nigeria to intervene and prevail on the president uh, to assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill when it gets to its table. Um, based on this debate that we're seeing over direct and indirect uh, primaries. Uh, primaries, do you have any fear that that, uh, that bill might sail through? I, the National Assembly has done their own. Thank God the governor could not even influence the various senators and rep members from National Assembly to do their biddings. Muhammad Buhari, that I know, we are sending that bill. I don't want to believe that. You predict so. I predict, and I envisage that one. He will send that bill. Considering what we have seen in his, as history on, on similar situations. Like what? The last time he wasn't assented to. Which one? The last amendment. The, the Eighth Assembly. The Eighth Assembly. We have to look at things from a conceptual point of view. That time they had issues. So many issues that time which I wouldn't want to go into. But we have a smooth sailing process now with the Ninth Assembly. I want to believe that Mr. President will send the electoral you know, uh, act bill. I want to believe that. And if it does, do you believe so much in that, that law? To a large extent. Yeah, a lot of concession were given on the in transmission, for instance. A lot of concession were given on the issue of direct primary. Who is afraid of direct primary? Who is afraid of transmitting, you know, votes electronically? Who is afraid of the various innovations and revolution put in place by the National Assembly? Who is afraid of that? If the governors are afraid of that, too bad for Nigerian democracy. A situation where governor take charge of the various political party is not a good omen for this country, and we must say it point blank. Give back to Nigerian people democracy. Let them decide whoever they want, as governors, as senators, as rep. Isn't it an agreement in the political uh, uh, sphere that the governors are the leaders of the parties in their different states? That is their convention. It's not, it's not. It's but not. can you blame them if they're a convention that gives them the, the toga of authority? When I, when, I, when, I, when I say convention, I don't mean by, con I mean, I mean I, by own, you know, it's convention. An unwritten it's an unwritten rule. rule. It's an, an agreement. Document. Yes. You know, you understand? Nobody asks them, nobody gives them that power. They confer the power on themselves. Or the system does. Government goes, whichever, whichever, government comes. Whichever way you look at it, people government. make up the system. It's so, not the same way that the president in the political party naturally assume the leadership of the party. They do that, but it's not that pronounced under this government. It's not pronounced under that word government as such. But again, if that is a trend in Nigeria, too bad for our democracy. And that is the warning. That so we the should party not, leadership we should not must take charge. Personalize, you know, the system, whereby everything that comes in terms of reasoning in terms of policy, in terms of decision, revolve around just one person. And I'm saying, under this government, especially at the, at the top level, Muhammad Buhari has not really, you know, portrayed such leadership traits in the last six years. So you, fair to him. You, you, you prefer his leadership style, political leadership style? For democracy to the try. Way handled... For democracy to try. For democracy, we are talking of democracy now. If democracy is, is actually government of the people, as we talk about, whereby the base, the masses, the people, determine to a large extent who comes to power, who their candidate is, I think that's tied to me for democracy is okay. Not, not, not a regimented leadership who All wants right. to program things in line with his own dictates. On a final note, uh, and just in a few seconds, if you can give us your party in short, and I'd like to, uh, you to be in this direction, you send a warning to the political elites as a party in short. The threats that you have raised, the warning that you have raised, 
what must they do to ensure that our democracy is sustained and the unity of this country is also sustained? What they must do is to make sure that imbibe, they imbibe the culture of true democracy, the political culture of gives and take. This over-centralization of power on governance, on political class holders, or office holders, is not a good omen for this country. And nobody, as I said, nobody should be under any illusion that the men of the barrack will not misbehave over our dead body. We don't, we don't pray for it. Mm. So if we want our democracy sustained, if we want democracy to thrive, if you want stability in our democracy and want Nigerian people to enjoy the dividends of democracy, our political class must do the right thing. Mm. It's not the way a manner weapons are being you know, assessed by no state actor is something that calls for serious worries. Right. And the military might take advantage of that. The military will not come. Um, uh, they don't have a place. Uh, their own role we don't is to do it. their job. We don't pay for our it. Our democracy, our civil rule must stay and we must develop it. But thank you for sending the warning and the signals that we need also uh, to uphold our democratic process and, of course, the unity of this country. Thank you so much, Professor Abbott. It's a pleasure. Thank you. For, for joining us tonight. The Director General of the National Institute of Legislative, Legislative and Democratic Studies. Professor Abu Bakr Sulaiman. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. This is Alpha. We can go on the program tonight. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.